another hand for Charlie for the best intro ever. Cool, well it's great to see so many people tonight. Um, I thought I would read a little piece that I wrote. It's called, To the People Who've Pissed Me Off This Week. <laughs> this is an open letter to the people who've pissed me off this week. Here we go. Dear Verizon, <laughs> when I called and asked you to add a text messaging plan to my cell phone, I was not in fact asking you to cancel my text messaging capabilities. Yeah, you, yeah, you did just that. What the F? Dear Kaiser Permanente, a $125 co-payment for an office visit when I already pay you $350 a month for my insurance? and $50, $55 more for an x-ray? Really? I am so thrilled that your CEO is lining his pockets with my misfortune. And while we're at it, let me add that I have always enjoyed our endless phone calls wherein every member services rep I speak to gives me different answers to the exact same question. Dear Nigerian guy who tried to blow up the plane. <laughs> Understand that life is hard when your father is a wealthy banker. <laughs> and when you, in a poor country, grew up privileged and pampered and had access to an elite Western education, what self respecting young man wouldn't want to rebel against his gilded past? But did you really have to try to take down a plane? And did you really have to put the bomb in your crotch? <laughs> Look, people think us Muslims are crazy enough as is. Please don't give them any more reasons to hate us. Oh, and thanks in advance for ruining every ex airport experience I will have this year. <laughs> Dear Comedy Club MC who can't pronounce my name correctly even though I've told you how to say it 9,000 times. <laughs> I realize most comedians are white dudes with regular white dude names that you don't have to think too hard about. But seriously, how hard is it to say Tisa? It rhymes with Lisa, for God's sake. <laughs> it's not Tess, Toss, Tesh, Tish, or Tissue. It's Tisa. Tisa. Got it? Good. Now that we've squared that away, please do not ask me if it's short for anything, because it is. But if you couldn't manage to say Tisa correctly, then there's no way you're going to be able to say Tisa Pet. Oh, what's that now? You want to know what it means in my language? It's ancient Persian for, we're so disappointed it's not a boy. <laughs> Dear young Mexican guy on the street who called me Lupe and started speaking to me in Spanish. <laughs> I realize you and I are the only brown people in a 10 block radius, but that does not automatically make me a Mexican woman named Lupe. <laughs> I don't know this Lupe you speak of, but since you sincerely seem, seem to think that I was her, I can only deduce that she is stunningly beautiful. <laughs> As for whatever you said to me in Spanish, all I can say is yo no comprendo. My Spanish is limited to important vocabulary like taco, burrito, and chimichanga. <laughs> and sangria. Dear lady who works at the antique store, I understand that I didn't walk into your store looking all suave and elegant like your usual uppity clientele, but I happen to like furniture and love antiques, and your store is open to everyone to browse, n'est-ce pas? <laughs> Thought I'd throw a little French your way, Shitty. You seem like the type who would appreciate that. Which brings me to, dear white people in my new neighborhood, Yes, I live here. No, I'm not somebody's nanny. Please stop giving me that look. <laughs> Dear guys who work at the local grocery store. Really, I live here. I really do. And I speak English just fine, so you don't need to speak to me slowly when you talk to me. <laughs> and damn it, stop giving me that look. I already told you I wasn't the nanny, jeez. <laughs> Dear new mommies in the coffee shop. I realize you gave up your super career in PR to marry that venture capitalist and start a family, and it's not as blissful as you thought it would be. But I have news for you. Nobody cares about your high-class problems. Stop blabbing about how your husband's bonus shrank 50% last year, or how you can't buy the $1,000 Dutch pram you want, or how you're wondering why you bothered getting that degree from Vassar. Oh, and one more thing. Nobody cares about your baby. 
Stop talking about him incessantly. And don't even think about coming over here and asking me what my nanny rates are. Dear stores that already put up Valentine's displays. Suck it. Dear mom. I know, I'm a disappointment. Instead of going to medical school like a good little Iranian daughter, I have shamed you by becoming a stand-up comic. I know it's embarrassing for you to sit amongst all those judgmental Iranian ladies who are boasting about their perfect daughters who became doctors, who married other Iranian doctors, and who will have children who all grow up to be Iranian doctors. While your daughter gets on stage and tells dick jokes to drunk strangers. <laughs> You can always get that on the word dick. That's all it takes. But admit it, Mom, you love what I do, because in the end, you can do something that none of those other ladies can. You get to forward newspaper articles, magazine spreads, radio interviews, and television clips of your daughter to all those women. You love one-upping them with emails linking to my media appearances, forcing them to write you back stilted emails about what a talented daughter you have. I know it's the only thing that keeps you from constantly badgering me about why the hell I do this stupid comedy thing. So for all the grief I have been spared, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Washington Post, Newsweek, PBS, NPR, and ABC. Now, dear smoking hot Persians at the Persian New Year's Eve party, my goodness, y'all, how'd you get your eyebrows to look like that? <laughs> and that's just the guys. <laughs> you know I love all you Persian boys with your slick hair, designer clothes, and hot cars that you can't afford. I wish I could be the hot, blonde, overly made-up Persian girl with the three-inch fake lashes and ten-inch heels and the tizite black little dress on your arm. But alas, I have my original nose, boobs, and hair color, and I know I don't measure up. It may sound like I'm making fun, but really I'm not. I totally admire you ladies who are so bold about your looks. It gives me something to aspire to. Maybe if I'm a good little Iranian comedian in this life, I can come back as a hot Persian bombshell in my next life. <laughs> <laughs> Dear limousine liberals, I know, you care about the world. You really do. You listen to NPR, you donate money to natural disaster victims, and once in a blue moon, you even consider trading in your Lexus for a Prius. But guess what? Just because you once haggled with a rug merchant at the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul, or you once went to an Iranian restaurant and loved the kebabs, does not make you an expert in Middle East culture. Please don't try to show off your vast knowledge of my part of the world to me, because I will be forced to make fun of you later. <laughs> And do not, by any means, tell me about the Iranian neighbor you once had, or ask me if I know him, and really, don't try out your three words of Persian on me. The dear Goldman Sachs, I realize you are very important and the world would simply fall apart without you, but did you really have to take first dibs on the limited swine flu vaccine? There isn't enough for schools, hospitals, and children, yet you finagled enough for all your employees. You are a class act, Goldman Sachs. Maybe we should offer you another bailout so you can give it out again as bonuses to your millionaire executives. And finally, dear friend who shall remain nameless, I really don't need to hear about all your dates in minute detail. I might pretend to sound interested and supportive, but really, I just think you're a dumb slut. Let's all try to do better next week, shall we? Love tissue. Thank you.